Are we seeing the birth pangs mentioned in scripture happening right now all over the world? Hi Saints, this is Lonnie and today I'm going to try to answer that question by rightly dividing. We can answer those questions we know by rightly dividing God's word and rightly dividing we shall. The first thing we need to do is look at scripture and see where birth pangs are mentioned and Houston we have a problem first of all take notice that the words birth pains are not found in the King James Bible that's right folks nowhere in the KJ can you find the words birth pains so that's the first red flag right off the bat we find the words birth pains in the newer versions in the for example in the uh, New King James Version there are a total of five times where birth pains is used in the ESV they use it once in the NASB the New American Standard they use it twice uh, in the RSV they use it three times and in the YLT I've never heard of that one YLT uh, they use it once YLT your lying translation I don't know so right off the bat there's a problem and the term birth pains is a secular word used in corrupted versions of the Bible and it's a huge red flag here folks now these corrupted versions of the Bible you may have some at home you may be even using one right now I get it folks when I first got saved reading the KJ the King James Version Bible was difficult for me I was young, a lot younger but honestly it was like reading Chinese I mean I had a hard time understanding it because of the words you know the, the old English and I get it I understand that a lot of you out there especially the newer Christians are probably going through the same thing and you find that the NIV the the new translations are easier to read and easier to understand but let me warn you okay I didn't know this when I first got saved and I too was using the new translations but over the years it was brought to my attention that the newer translations are corrupted and what I mean by that is they remove complete scripture they twist scripture they add to scripture they do all the things that God says he will condemn them for one day okay so that should tell you something if you can the best way to get to understand the KJ the King James is to get one to buy one and get one with large print so you can see it um, you know especially if you're older like I am and as soon as you get one start reading it and the more you read it the more comfortable you'll get with the older English and then all of a sudden it's gonna click the light bulb is gonna come on and you're gonna start understanding it better the only way to get through it is practice you, you have to really uh, you know practice you you have to use the KJ Bible in order to get comfortable with it if you never get one then you're always gonna have that problem of you know of it reading like it seems like it's Chinese so that's my my advice get one force yourself to use it and read it because I have not found any contradictions in the KJ um, there may seem like there's contradictions there may seem like things are wrong but I promise you there's no contradictions and there's nothing wrong you know what happens is we like to label what we don't understand as a contradiction and that's God's way I think of forcing us to study his word and to learn his word you know and then we find out wow that wasn't a contradiction at all it was just that I didn't understand it so anyway with that said when I use the phrase corrupted versions please don't take it personally 
I understand, you know, but heed my warning that the KJ is the only version on planet Earth that is 100% correct. All right. So moving on now, uh, going back to birth pains. Now, there's one such corrupted version, okay, the newer ones, which uses this term birth pains the most of any other new version out there. For the purposes of this study, um, it uses it in two verses, okay? But this particular Bible uses it, uses the words birth pains in a total of eight, for eight times, all right, which is interesting. For the context of this study, we need to look at two verses, Matthew 24, 8 and Mark 13, 8. In Matthew 24, 8, the corrupted version says, all these things are the beginning of birth pains. The KJ says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. In Mark 13, 8, the corrupted version says, for nation will rise up in arms against nation and kingdom against kingdom there will be earthquakes in various places and there will be famines these are but the beginning of birth pains in the KJ Bible mark 13 8 for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be earthquakes in diverse places and there shall be fam famines and troubles these are the beginnings of sorrows we can see that the corrupted versions are changing the words, okay? Beginning of sorrows and using the term birth pains. The problem we have here is that the meaning of the of beginning of sorrows is completely different than the term birth pains. And we see the enemy changing a few words to change the context of God's word, okay? Thus confusing people, causing contention within the church, and even worse, creating the many different denominations out there that we, you know, that we see today. So, okay, so are we seeing birth pains today in the world? Are we seeing the beginning of sorrows today according to the context of these verses? If you've been following my series, the study series, Hidden Truth, you now have the tools to use to find out the who, what, when, how, where questions, how to discover the context of God's word, which leads you to rightly divide scripture. Now, we know by rightly dividing that Matthew and Mark are both pre-mystery Gospels. Matthew and Mark are about the earthly kingdom program for the Jews and has nothing to do with the body of Christ today. Now, let's uh, take a look. Let's read in context in the KJ Bible, both Matthew and Mark, and uh, let's see what's going on here. I'm going to try to put Matthew 24... Let's see, I'm going to put it on the screen for, real quick here. Matthew 24, uh, verse 5 through 8, or 10 here that we have. I'm sorry, Matthew 24, verses 1 through 10. But we're going to start in verse 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars see that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to a pass but the end is not yet for nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places all these things are the beginning of sorrows then in the very next verse Jesus says then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake okay now let's stop right here for a moment we know that jesus is talking about daniel's 70th week and we also know that he's talking about the first four seals leading up to the abomination of desolation and here's how we get there if you look at revelation Let's see, Revelation chapter 6. Let me put that on the screen for you real quick. Revelation 6. All right. Now, in Revelation 6, 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts, saying, Come and see. 
And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now stop. Notice how Revelation 6, 1 and 2 is speaking about the same thing as Matthew 24, verses 4 and 5. In Matthew 24, 4, 5, we read, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, the first seal in Revelation, and shall deceive many. Okay, the first seal being the Antichrist, coming in the name of Christ, deceiving many. Now, let's look at Revelation 6, verses 3 and 4. And when he opened, when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. Notice again, this is speaking about the very same thing that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24, verse 6 and 7. And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. Now go over to Revelation 6 verses 5 and 6 and when he had opened the third seal I heard the third beast say come and see and I beheld and lo a black horse and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of four beasts say a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barley for a penny and see thou hurt not the oil and the wine here, Jesus mentions the same thing in Matthew 24, 7, the last half of the verse. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And what does Jesus say in the very next verse? Matthew 24, 8. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Now, Jesus stops there in Matthew because the very next thing, to happen is the abomination of desolation we're at the middle half of Daniel's week if you continue on in Revelation 6 8 and 9 you'll discover that it's going into the time of when the Antichrist comes to full power under Satan the abomination of desolation the great tribulation and then he goes after believers specifically the Jewish believers who flee to Jerusalem Okay, or they flee from Jerusalem to be hid and provided for for 1260 days. Now, if you look at Mark 13, 6 through 8, let me pull that up for you real quick. Mark 13, okay. You'll notice here as well that the order is exactly that same order as the first three seals in Revelation 6. Then in Mark, Jesus ends with, These are the beginning of sorrows. Then he goes on to explain what happens. The great tribulation, the great sorrows, the Antichrist, and so forth. Again, revealing what the birth pangs are and when they take place. And rest assured, the Antichrist will kill all believers, both Jews and Gentiles, who love Jesus Christ. But let's keep in mind, Daniel's 70th week is primarily about the Jews. God is going to, once the fullness of Gentiles comes in and the rapture happens, the, we've had 2,000 years under grace to accept Christ Jesus as our Savior and Lord. And once that fullness comes in, the rapture happens, God is going to turn completely from grace and he's going to turn to focusing with the Jews once again in the earthly program. So we've just seen by comparing scripture, rightly dividing God's word, that Jesus calls the first three seals, the beginning of sorrows. These birth pains that are listed in the other versions of the Bible 
and the term most of Christendom is familiar with today. Again, I ask you, are we seeing the birth pangs today? The ones spoken of by Jesus in Matthew 24. No, we're not. And we're not going to see these birth pangs because we'll be long gone at this point. Remember, the rapture takes place before Daniel's seven-year period. It's for Daniel's people, the Jews. Those birth pangs will come in the first half of Daniel's 70th week, in the first half of the seven years of trials and testing. These birth pangs happen just prior to the Great Tribulation. These are warnings to the Jews that the abomination of desolation is about to occur, so get ready. Now, during the first half of Daniel's week, while our Lord Jesus is cracking open the seals, there will be famine and plagues, wars and rumors of wars, and billions of people will die. Also, there will be earthquakes like never before, but the big earthquakes will be during the latter half of those seven years. That's why it's called the Great Tribulation, or Jacob's Trouble. So, you know, when you see these people out there on YouTube trying to scare everyone, telling you that the birth pangs are happening right now, that we're in, we're in the tribulation period and so on, and all that garbage, now you know they're completely ignorant to what God's word says rightly divided because they don't know how to rightly divide. And that's a good indicator to unsubscribe from these people and move on to other people that can edify you with God's truth rightly divided. Don't be fooled, my friends. There are wolves in sheep's clothing all over YouTube. And most of them are just after your money. They'll tell you what you want to hear. They'll sensationalize the news to get your attention. Then they'll twist Bible verses. And it all ends up with asking you to send them money. Again, Satan stealing the seed and the gospel truth. First of all, we know the word birth pains is not in the KJ. Second, we know that the beginning of sorrows is in reference to the days leading up to the Great Tribulation and the last half of Daniel's 70th week. My hope is you've seen how important Rightly Dividing truly is. And if you want to learn more about Rightly Dividing, some tools you can use to study God's Word, please go over to my eight-part series called Hidden Truth and study along with us. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior today, then please, I beg you, consider the results of not knowing Him as your Savior. It won't be pleasant. If you want to be sure that no matter what happens, you'll be in heaven when the time comes, that you'll be caught up from the grips of the Antichrist and spared from taking part in the worst time ever to hit the earth, worse than Noah's flood, worse than any time in the future, it's going to be hell on earth, literally, and you do not want to be here for it. I promise you that. If you sincerely understand with the right motivation that you're on the wrong path, covered in your sins, and you sincerely want to change that path, because you realize that you're dead in sin without Christ Jesus. Then with sincere conviction and again with the right motivation, admit that you're lost in your sins and tell God that you want Him to change you into the person that He wants you to be. And that you sincerely believe and trust in Christ Jesus' good news, the gospel, that He is God in the flesh, that He did die on the cross, and he did take your sins with him into death. And he did on the third day rise from the grave alive and in absolute righteousness. And now covers you with that righteousness. Making you forgiven of all sin. And making you righteous in the sight of God. Covering you with the righteousness of Christ Jesus, his only begotten son. Believe and trust. Paul wrote, in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-5, Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, in which also you stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, for I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, 
and that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day according to the, those scriptures and that he appeared to Cephas then the twelve if you believe this gospel and confess Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior today please tell me send me a message and let me know that you've made this very important decision today thanks for watching everyone peace and grace in Christ Jesus be unto you and your families see you next time